All right, so today's main topic is about reproduction. Uh, so there's two main types of reproduction. So for today's notes, I'm actually going to have you split uh, your left page into thirds and your right page into thirds. And I'll put up on the board what pages I need you to split up. Um, we're going to give you the brief overview of uh, the two types of reproduction. Okay, so there's asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. The prefix A essentially just means non-sexual. So you can either be sexual reproduction or not sexual reproduction. So let's get into it. So, all right. The top third, I want you to do the drawing of asexual reproduction. So we'll draw this together. So let's just say that you have an organism that is made up of cells. Okay, we'll make it, this organism is made up of, we'll say three cells, all right? And all three cells are the same. So that's your organism. Then, if it goes through asexual reproduction, it essentially doesn't need sexual reproduction, so it just kind of makes a copy of itself. Okay, so like starfish, if you ever like cut off an arm of a starfish and you throw it back in the ocean, it'll grow a new starfish. Um, or really simple organisms sometimes will go through this process. So really all you do is you have this little cell here, or organism here, and then it kind of grows a new cell. And that new cell is exactly the same as this first cell. And then that cell goes through mitosis, oops, and grows some new cells and some more new cells. And before you know it, your new organism is exactly the same as the old one. Asexual reproduction, okay? Organism breaks off, new cell, makes an organism that is exactly the same. This is drawing one. Easy peasy, right? Okay, drawing two now. Now that you know a little bit about chromosomes, let's talk about that. So, let's take that same organism and the same three cells, and let's just say this organism has only two chromosomes, okay, in every single cell. It goes through asexual reproduction, makes a new cell, and same thing, goes through mitosis, makes a new cell, and this cell will be genetically identical. Okay, so when you have asexual reproduction, the offspring, which is the fancy name for essentially the kids, uh, they will be genetically identical, and then they'll go through mitosis, and they'll make new cells, okay? So, very similar to the first drawing, I know, but I want to make sure you get the point that when you have asexual reproduction, the new organism is genetically identical to the old one. It doesn't matter how many cells it has, it has the exact same chromosomes. All right, now, on the bottom third of yours, we're going to just write a couple little notes. All right, so I want to make sure that you got this. If you wrote it in the last slide, then don't worry about it. But genetically identical as far as the chromosomes and DNA from the parent um, to the offspring. The main advantage, so basically, why do organisms go through asexual reproduction? The main advantage is ultimately that you don't need a whole lot of energy to make it happen. Okay, so like you don't need to go around and try to find a mate or a partner or anything else, because in asexual reproduction, you don't need two organisms, you only need one. So really, if you're sitting around and you feel like you need a new copy of yourself, then you just make one. Um, I know that's oversimplifying it, but that's basically kind of how it works. So that's the main advantage of it, it's, it's pretty easy. Now here's the main disadvantage. Evolutionary speaking, most organisms do sexual reproduction. So there has to be some advantage to it, because if asexual was so good, then we'd all be doing that, okay? that we'd all just have a little person growing outside of us whenever we want a new person, but we don't. Um, and the main reason for that is when you go through asexual reproduction, the main disadvantage is there's no genetic variety. So what I mean by that is the parents and the offspring are genetically identical. That's actually a really bad thing as far as evolution is concerned because if some sort of disease comes through, it'll wipe out everyone. If it wipes out one of the population, it'll wipe out everyone. Or if some of these cells or the organisms can't handle cold and the climate changes, they're all going to get wiped out. So that's the main disadvantage is that there's no variety. So basically if something bad happens to that species, it's going to happen to all of them. Okay, none of them are going to survive for the most part. So that's the main disadvantage. Okay, sexual reproduction. All right, let's, let's, let's get into this, shall we? So the first thing I want you to realize about sexual reproduction is most organisms do it plants do it. Um, sexual reproduction essentially means when you have an egg and a sperm, okay? You have an egg, egg from a female, sperm from 
a male and they come together. Okay, it, it can be animals, plants, like I said, it could be a variety of different species. As long as you have sperm and egg, it's sexual reproduction. So, the way this works is, I guess, a little bit different. So, for this one, you need two parents. That's the main difference right off the bat, okay? So you have parent A, whose all their cells are like this, and you have parent B, whose all their cells are like this, okay? And then they come together and they make a new child, if you will, and their child is exactly half mom and exactly half dad, okay? So all of us were formed in this process, that's why you are half mom and half your, your dad. So that is a simplified version, where you start with a mom and a dad, or male and female, and you end up with an organism that's 50-50. Okay, that's the simplified version, easy to run. Now if you look at the chromosomes, okay? All right, mom, dad again, all right. Mom has two chromosomes. Dad has, we'll say two chromosomes in our example. I'm gonna add an extra circle here because you know this process. This is, let's say, mom's normal cells and dad's normal cells that go through meiosis, each of them. And in meiosis, the cells get half the chromosomes. So that would be mom's sex cells, dad's sex cells, okay? Went through meiosis, made haploid sex cells. And then those two get together. So normal cells and then these two get together. And when they get together, you end up with one chromosome from dad and one chromosome from mom. So mom cells normal, dad cells normal, mom sex cells, dad sex cells. They come together and when they do it's called fertilization and you have now the beginning of a new child. Okay, and then from there to go through mitosis and every new cell will be just like this from a chromosome point of view. Okay, all right. And the final thing here is the notes. They're pretty much gonna be the opposite of the asexual reproduction. So from a chromosome and DNA point of view, the offspring have half the DNA from each parent. Okay, so they're no longer genetically identical. They just have half from each parent. The main advantage is now genetic variety. So like I said, the reason that we've all evolved to have sexual reproduction is because as species evolve, climate changes, things change, diseases come, and it's very, very important that a species can survive in order for them to keep on going. So um, if you have a species and a disease comes through, it might wipe out 90% of them, but because each child is a little bit different, and every time you make a child, they're not exactly the same, and so everyone's all a little bit different, d genetically speaking. Uh, some are gonna survive and some won't. So that's a, a main advantage to sexual reproduction is having this variety in your species. And the main disadvantage is it takes energy to reproduce, okay? There's so many species out there that, that spend you know all their time essentially trying to find a mate and trying to reproduce as opposed just to kind of be able to grow something off your shoulder or something like that. So. Again, pretty much the exact opposite here. So this is asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction in a nutshell. Um, of course, if you have any questions, definitely come talk to me. But uh, yeah, that should pretty much do it. All right. Thank you.